I'd like to thank the organisers very much for, uh, for asking me to uh, present here, for the honour of it. Um, I'm, uh, I've got no conflicts of interest to declare. And in the past, a, a, a lone cardiologist standing at a cardiac surgical meeting would have felt a bit like Daniel in front of the lion's den. However, that's in the past. And now, with our modern heart team, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is me, this is Vipin, um, up in Edinburgh, and uh, we're now working closely together to try and get the best outcomes for our patients. What I'd like to do is convince you over the next 10 minutes that, that FFR gives us this opportunity, something I perform at the time of the original referral, you can then use the information to get the best outcomes for, for, for your operations. So I'm going to talk about what is fractional flow reserve, is there a role for FFR in the use of, uh, for patients with multivessel disease, and is there a role of FR, FR, sorry, FFR in patients with aortic stenosis and coronary disease. So FFR is useful for, the, for uh, assessing intermediate lesions. We can see that this lesion is definitely, there's a lesion in this LAD. It's not quite clear how tight it is, and it's subtending a large area of myocardium. So what we do with an FFR is we take a, a pressure wire, pass it down past the narrowing, and then using a clever equation with, with a few assumptions, under maximum hyperemia with uh, adenosine, we can get a score. And effectively, if it's greater than 0.75, the lesion is not significant. If it's less than 0.75, it is significant and is causing ischemia. And in uh, PCI, this has been validated in large trials. In one, uh, the DEFER trial, in patients who had an FFR lesion of greater than 0.75, you actually did more harm than good if you went on to treat it whereas you were safe to leave the ones that were, were uh, or you were safe to treat the ones that were significant, but you were better off leaving the ones that were non-significant. And this was then also confirmed in a large trial of multivessel disease, where up, up to uh, 24 months, patients that had just the lesions treated that was significant with FFR did better than the patients who were treated, um, who, who, who all angiographic lesions were treated if the, if the operator thought it was significant. And also, interestingly, when you look at intermediate lesions, so these are the lesions on an angiogram where you think of between 50 and 90 percent, a lot of those lesions may appear to be non-significant uh, or significant, and you've guessed it the wrong way. The intermediate lesions, it's difficult to predict what the FFR is going to be just from the angiogram. And then changing for, for you know, coronary surgery, does it matter if you bypass a vessel that doesn't have a significant stenosis. Well, we know that coronary disease uh, atheroma is accelerated after a vessel is bypassed. And that's, uh, that's been shown in particularly the, the coronary disease progression is worse or is more, more accelerated if you have a venous graft rather than an arterial graft. And if we want to look at lemur patency, if, if, the, if the stenosis in the LAD or wherever was not that significant, that, that there's a higher chance of, of the lemograph not taking. Um, and also, the severity of the original lesion that the, a vein graft has been bypassed predicts the chance of it being occluded at two-year follow-up. So probably, there, probably it is uh, less beneficial to, to, to graft a vessel that doesn't have a significant stenosis. And so then, if we only bypass uh, uh, lesions that have been proven to be FFR significant, Will that give us better operation outcomes? Well, certainly in, in this trial, we can see that here there were 164 patients who underwent bypass, and they were then followed up. And the patients were, com were compared between those who had their FFR-guided grafting and those who had just angiographic guiding. And graft, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, the patients were, they were grafted if the FFR was significant. Um, and, uh, sorry, the, the vessels were checked, and those who uh, were recorded that were significant or not significant, and then they were grafted. And in the vessels that were not significant, there was a 21% failure rate at one year, compared to a 9% failure rate in the vessels that were significant to, to FFR. And then in a bigger trial, we had to, with, where this is retrospective, but there were 600 patients, 430 had an angiogram-guided um, revascularization, 100 or 200 effectively had FFR guided, and they were followed up then for three years, 
and then what happened during surgery was recorded. And we can see that in the patients that had FFGAR, FFR guided bypass, there were less venous anastomosis, more arterial anastomosis, and higher rates of, of off pump surgery. And clinical outcomes were for uh, MACE, survival, MI, and TVR were the same. However, angina was better in the patients that had only had FFR guided revascularization. Um, and also, the graphs were more patent in those who'd had FFR guided revascularization. So, for FFR guided um, bypass grafting, we can see that results in fewer grafts, more arterial grafts, higher off pump surgery rate with lower rates of angina afterwards, more graft patency at follow up, um, and no increase at MACE at three years. So, that, that's FFR, its use, its possible use for in, in guiding bypass. Can we use it in the more difficult situation of patients who have aortic stenosis and uh, coronary artery disease? Now, his, historically, FFR has not been used in, in the assessment of aortic stenosis because there's a concern that when, when you have a lot of left ventricular hypertrophy, it will affect your, your microvascular resistance and the adenosine won't be so, so effective. However, recently in the, in the world of TAVI, and also in surgical valve replacement, pressure wires have been done exactly you know, immediately pre and post surgery. And actually, there doesn't seem to be that big a difference in, in FFR results depending on, on um, aortic stenosis. Non invasive testing of coronary disease when someone does have severe aortic stenosis is very difficult. An exercise test will, will be positive, but it doesn't tell you anything about what's going on with the, with the vessels. Um, and it's also very, it's very important to know whether a vessel needs to be grafted at the time of an operation or not. So in another trial, these patients, there were 318 patients who were being assessed for possible workup for valve surgery and grafts. They, were, they had moderate or severe, or moderate to, sorry, they were either moderate or severe aortic stenosis with at least one vessel that had an intermediate lesion at, angiogra at angiography. A hundred of them were assessed with FFR, and 200 of them were just grafted if the lesion looked tight. And they were then followed up for, for MACE at five years, the number of types and type of grafts that they got, and also whether the AVR, the, the aortic valve replacement, could be deferred, because some of these patients had only moderate aortic stenosis. And when we look here, we can see that, um, yet again, there's less venous grafts, there's, there's less venous anastomosis, and also a, more patients went on to have uh, PCI meaning that they were, their surgery was deferred for a period of time, meaning that they didn't have to get their, their lesion was either non-significant or if it was a single vessel with moderate aortic stenosis, they could have a, a PCI and then come back for surgery later on. And at five-year follow-up, we have there's, there's no difference in uh, MACE or death, death rates at, at five years. So in patients with moderate to severe aortic stenosis and coronary artery disease, FFR um, may, may result in um, safe deferral of, in moderate aortic stenosis of AVR if the FFR is non-significant. In AVR, in the patients who undergo aortic valve replacement with bypassing, if the bypasses are only done of significant vessels, there's less venous grafts and anastomosis, and, and there's no difference in event rates at five years. So, to, to conclude, FFR in cardiac surgery, I think now, you know, as, as we're working together in this heart team, as, cardio as cardiac surgeons, you should be asking your cardiologist to give you the data for intermediate lesions so that you can then, you can then make the decision of, of what you graft. I think we need to rethink some of the rationale for grafting vessels. There's, there's often been a feeling that people, when they're having a bypass operation, it's a once-in-a-lifetime operation, so everything should be grafted. Maybe more selective grafting is a, is, a, is, a, is a good idea. And FFR is a useful tool in improving these outcomes from cardiac surgery. Although all the data I've shown you this morning is, is observational and retrospective, so randomized trials are underway and we need that data before. This should be a, a proper shift. Any questions?